Okay, so let's go over to make a blending tortillion. And first I'm going to get started with using this tool over here that's always hiding out. I think it's under this one. Smudge. Some might think it would be a blur, but it really isn't. It's a smudge. Okay, now at just smudge, let's talk about that for a second. Smudge, what this does is if I go in, it kind of just allows me to pull the texture away from it and then blend it into something else. Now that's handy, but it's not what I really want. Sometimes I do use this to make like fins on fish. See, you can already get that, that feel for it. And then I can go in and take the sketch brush and then start really adding some of those values back in also good for hair okay so just so stupid things like that you know if you play around with your scratch pad enough and think about texture and how you're going to make a given texture you know it's a really handy thing to have and just practice at so that's just the smudge tool in general now the smudge tools settings however let's say I use my new brush, this one, and I do a scatter effect on it. Okay. And I'm going to make this brush a little bit bigger using the bracket keys. That way I can see the dot pattern going on. Okay. Now let's go to sh dynamics here. Let's kind of shift this around a little bit. Again, this is going to be one of those things that if I make it, I'm going to play around with it quite a bit before I get happy with it. Okay, so let's test this one out, just as it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go back to the smudge tool, drop this down to this, and try to get that same dot pattern here. There we go. So that, that works out in my favor. So I got shape dynamics on, um, my size jitter. If I wanted that on, I could. Actually, what I want to do is just make sure my angle jitter's on, and I'm going to try this out. So what this should do, instead of uh, make this really, really, really smooth gradient, this should make it so it's got some kind of variance in the actual blending. So let me zoom in here and show you what this does. Okay. So I can blend. Blend texture together. There we go. Very nice. And you can already see, wow, this is just a stupid little couple brush strokes. And I got some really cool forms shaping together with this, right? So using this brush, you can get a lot of cool creatures uh, started because, you know, you can lay down some texture. Let's say you got an artist block going on. You can lay down some cool textures kind of blend them all together, kind of start forming it around, and you'll see these forms start taking shape. And then you can go back in. First, I want to save this. This is going to be my um, blender with texture. Okay, and now I can start going back into the sketch brush and start utilizing some of these shapes in here.
and I'm drawing really big or real small in a given area because what will happen here is when I zoom out, I'll get all this unbelievable good detail going on. So I'm just going to kind of show you, you know, what, I, what I'm thinking of now is, you know, these values are kind of dark in this given area. So what I want to do is knock those values down. Don't forget you have to always unclick unprotected or protected tones. And I'm just going to knock those values down. Okay, good. Let's try out my texture brush. You know, maybe I want to put some texture in here too. And I could keep going back and forth between texture and kneaded brush and start hammering some really cool textures in just using those two methods. So now, what if I want to start, you know, using the eraser better, okay? And that's when you flip over your Wacom drawing tablet pen, you have an eraser. Sometimes you want it to be so defined as this and to make really nice forms out of something like that. But maybe you want a gradient on the outside edge. So that's next in the next video where we start looking at how to utilize your erasers. We also need another blender in here that deals with not blending with texture, but just blending in general. So next video.